Welcome to Uncommon Sense, where we do our best to make it common again. I'm your host, Adrian Alquist, and today I'm joined by Vicki Darkey, who is a Chestertonian, and she is a writer for our Gilbert magazine under the Varied Types column, and she's also the coordinator for our local societies. And uh, more recently, you're, you're the coordinator of the Francis Chesterton Rosary League, which we want to talk about. But how are you, Vicki? I'm great, Adrian. How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. I'm very good. Uh, so let's start off by talking about the local societies before we get into the Rosary League. Uh, and I've mentioned I mentioned all of this before. I mentioned the Rosary League with Nancy Brown in the interview uh, earlier. But let's start with the local societies. Um, how, like, give, give us a, a brief summary about them and your involvement and how they've grown and the interest you see with all, you know all things Chesterton. Okay. Local societies are in some ways kind of where um, our apostolate meets the street. It's um, we have small local local Chesterton societies are small groups. We have them all over the country and some of them in um, other countries as well. Um, and basically a local Chesterton society is a group of people who like to get together and read and talk about Chesterton. Great. Um, yeah, that's I mean, uh, that's localism, right? That's what we want. We want uh, we want it people is. to gather in person together. Yep. Yeah, that's great. And yeah, people, people can come to local societies who maybe don't know about Chesterton. And it's a good way to to discover Chesterton. Um, mm -hmm. Many of us find that uh, reading G.K. Chesterton at the at the beginning can be a challenge. But when you find other people to read him with mm -hmm. and talk about it, it sort of opens it up for you and it can be a really great introduction and a, and a great way just to deepen your understanding of who he was and what he had to say. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I assume that you've seen just interest grow in Chesterton at these, at these societies, right? Definitely. That's great. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I assume COVID didn't help things, but, uh, <laughs> But hopefully we'll we'll see a resurgence in uh, afterwards in the local societies, right? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because a number of societies have figured out how to navigate this adventure, and they're they're doing it with a combination of Zoom or in person meetings whenever they can. That's um, great. Yeah. So it's it's we're just going to keep trucking. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. I also didn't mention about Vicky that uh, you were a homeschool mom for 25 years. I, yeah. I probably should mention that. That's amazing. <laughs> I know I, I didn't want to blindside you with, with that, yeah. but but uh, uh, how how was that? <laughs> um, it was also an adventure. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> for for my kids and for me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you teach? I hope you taught Chesterton. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. Great. 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 Uh, well, let's let's get into the Francis Chesterton Rosary League, um, which is an older initiative, but we want um, to revisit that and make it more popular. Uh, but let's assume that people haven't heard about this. Can you give a summary uh, about what it is? What is the Francis Chesterton Rosary League? Yes, the Francis Chesterton Rosary League is a is a rosary prayer initiative that we started about two years ago um, because we realized the need for prayer. Yes. And we, we, we realized the need to have a prayer um, ministry within our apostolate, the, uh, the Chesterton Society. So um, the purpose of the uh, Francis Chesterton Rosary Leaks is to support the apostolate and to support it in a it, by exploring Chestertonian prayer. So, and as a, as a league, it is a, it's a, we envision it as a network of small rosary groups that meet in homes, um, who mm -hmm. are connected by their, um, affiliation with the apostolate. And right. So it's a lot like the local societies, except on the spiritual side rather than the intellectual yes. side. Right. Yes. And a person doesn't need to be a Chestertonian or even interested in Chesterton to be part of the Rosary League. Right, um, right. I think there are spouses of Chestertonians and there are family members of Chestertonians or even just people in our neighborhoods who really are looking for people to pray with. And mm -hmm. this could be a possibility for people to really connect and find that. 
Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, and so, but why, why does the apostolate have a prayer initiative? These are somewhat rhetorical questions, but I, I, I think you get, you get, you will give better answers. So why, why does the apostolate have this prayer initiative? Why does it need to have it? Well, don't we have things we need to pray about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, think, I, I yeah. think too, we recognize that the world is um, in need of grace and prayer. And if we can, if we can be an avenue for that. Mm -hmm. um, also, as the, as the apostolate grows and the various ministries have, have taken form, they all would benefit from prayer support. Um, and we recognize that Francis Chesterton, this was, it was named for Francis. Francis Chesterton was that quiet, supportive person in the background for Gilbert. Mm -hmm. um, he, she, he, she was his spiritual inspiration. Um, basically, when he met Francis, she led him to Christ. And mm -hmm. um, her spiritual support for him was, was essential for him being who he was. And, and we, we really have him and we have his voice and we can appreciate his, his message because Francis was the support that she was. And so we envisioned this, this Rosary League as being a supportive ministry yeah. to the apostolate for common sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll add on to that, that, I mean, we are an apostolate of the church. And so we need to have that prayerful component. Uh, we can't be all, all heady. We got to have the heart involved too. And, and, you know, even if we're talking intellectually about, about, uh, you know, Catholic things, uh, I, our, our parish priest said, I, I remember a long time ago, he said, it's one thing to be Orthodox. It's another thing to be holy. And that's very true. And part of being holy is, is praying. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So, so why the rosary? Why? And by the way, these are questions we get. So that's why I'm asking these. Yeah. Why, why the rosary specifically? Well, as we, as we've um, establish this Rosary League, part of our intention is to make it a place that re reflects Chestertonian spirituality. Mm -hmm. And Chesterton, uh, Gilbert and Francis were Catholic, and their, their spiritual life was Catholic in nature, um, their devotional life. Um, and the Rosary is the fundamental Catholic prayer. Uh, outside of the Mass, it is really the the it is the prayer well i guess the divine office is officially the prayer of the church but the rosary is is the devotional prayer for the people of the catholic faith and gilbert and francis prayed the rosary we know that and had a, a deep devotion to the blessed mother so yeah okay it yeah. seems appropriate that we would have it as a rosary group that makes sense great uh, uh here's another question why why francis chesterton this might be uh, a more in-depth uh, question, but yeah, why why are we why is the the person at the front Francis Chesterton, who, who's Gilbert's wife? Yeah, like I said before, it's it's reflective of her role in Gilbert's life, and we see that this Rosary League will will bear sort of an analogous role to mm. the society. And um, that's good. Yeah, and we see Francis as really personifying a Marian um, dimension in Gilbert's life. She was just in her quiet, behind the scenes, um, powerful silence that she she brought to him. And, and mm -hmm. uh, so- That makes sense, yeah. That, and we felt that also that the Chesterton's marriage was such a essential and important witness. And we wanna, we wanna honor their marriage by, by naming yeah. this after his wife. Yeah, uh it, I my my uh head is drawn to the fact that Ch I think Francis is kind of like Saint Joseph in a, in a in a weird way because yeah. Saint Joseph was the quiet one in the yeah. holy family and uh and now he's he's grown. We talked about this on the podcast actually with my dad. He's you know, he's a giant now. He's a is a spiritual giant and and Francis even though she's she's the wife um, the, in, in the relationship, she, she, I think she experienced, experienced a similar trajectory as St. Joseph's, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Even her humility that she 
Exactly. She yeah. wanted all of her papers burned when she died. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, many unfortunately, of them yeah. were, some of them weren't. So Nancy was able to do what she did in, in, uh, wow. Like, like kind of like St. Thomas of Aquinas when, yeah, when he it, wanted to burn all of his works. Cause it, he said, all of this is, is ash. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So she had that humility and it also, it, she didn't want Gilbert writing about her in his writing either. And he honored that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But so she's that quiet, sort of behind the scenes person and um so important. Great, so. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh so for the the Francis Chesterton Rosary League, we pray the scriptural rosary specifically. Uh yeah. can you say what that is and yeah. and why we, we use the scriptural rosary? Yes. We as we as we considered the format for our rosary league groups, um we realized that we wanted to pray the rosary and um the scriptural rosary became the, the, the preferred format. The scriptural rosary is a way of praying the rosary that unites a, a brief scripture passage with each of the Hail Marys in the rosary. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just sort of a beautiful way to incorporate a scriptural meditation on the particular mysteries as we go through. So, for instance, when we pray the the joyful mystery of the nativity the scripture verses that go with those hail marys are all scripture verses that unfold the story of the nativity and that mm -hmm. is that's that's kind of the case with each of the mysteries in the in the rosary the scriptural rosary sort of just enlightens the story of each of the mysteries um, and for unity amongst the groups, we decided to use a particular, there are a number of scriptural rosaries that people have developed over the years, but we decided that we needed one mm -hmm. to unify all of our groups. So we selected the scriptural rosary that is published by the Christianica Press. And it's a little blue book. It looks just like this. Um, hardback book. It's available at most of probably at most local Catholic bookstores and a couple of places online, you can pick it up. And we'll provide, if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll provide a link to buy the scriptural rosary. Uh, and, and yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. But uh, you know, it's, it's a really nice format to use. Um, right. Yeah, I agree. You're praying in an in-person group. If you've got your group actually in person, only one person actually needs to have this because you can pass it around. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're going to, if you're going to, a lot of people may prefer to buy one for themselves to have. Um, and if you're going to be meeting on internet platforms, it would be helpful for each person who's going to help lead a mystery to have their own copy. But um, it's not an expensive little book. It's, it's right, right. Uh, yeah, you can get them for anywhere between 10 and $20 usually. No yeah, yeah. And we're not, we're not trying to sell this to you because we, we don't offer it. We, we're giving, we'll give you a place where you can buy it, but, right. but uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, so let's say there's not a rosary group near you. Uh, well, first, first of all, if you, you can find, if there is a rosary group near you, uh, if you visit our, our website at chesterton.org, you'll be able to find a place the Francis Chesterton Rosary League will also um, provide a link in the description. I believe it's the uh, chesterton.org slash Francis dash Chesterton dash Rosary dash League. <laughs> um, and, uh, but yeah, you can find it if you go to chesterton.org and, um, and you can search for one close to you, just like with the local societies actually. Uh, but let's say there's not one close to you. Well, you can start one, right? Is, isn't that correct? Yep. And in fact, we think that lots of people should start one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, and, you know, go and, ahead. What, why, why, um, or how, how would someone go about starting it? Well, just simply want to start one <laughs> and reach out to uh, people that you think would like to pray with you. And it, it may be neighbors. It may be people in your parish or in your, if, if you're in a, um, a Catholic school, a parish family or a school family. Um, it doesn't even have to be people, like we said before, it doesn't have to be people who would like Chesterton, just people who are willing to come and pray the scriptural rosary. Mm -hmm. And the other aspect of our format is to pray for the intentions of the Francis Chesterton Rosary League. And we should probably talk about that in a minute, but let me finish. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to start one, simply contact people, set up a time and a place and, and um, 
The resources and instructions for how to do this are also available on our website. So um, it doesn't take a whole lot. We recommend you keep it as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. Use an email simply to contact people uh, and keep them in the loop as far as your communications and begin to meet. We yeah. recommend at least once a month, um, but some rosary groups prefer to meet weekly. Um, it's totally up to you how frequently you meet, but at least once a month we ask. Um, and it, you know, in some cases it might even be just within your household. If your family regularly prays the rosary together and you decide that you'd like to designate one of your family rosaries to be a Francis Chesterton rosary, you can feel free to do that too. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just follow the format that we have on the website. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, on that, again, the same same place uh, where you can try to find if there's one close to you, we have the resources there to start one. We have the link to to get the scriptural rosary. We have um, the prayer intentions. Do you want to do you want to mention that? What what are the prayer intentions? Sure. The prayer intentions are kind of a neat thing that happened. Shortly after we started the Rosary Initiative, we realized that we needed uh, the format, but we also um, needed something to, can, to unite us in our purpose. And, and part of the purpose of the Rosary groups is to pray for, not only to pray for the needs and the, and the um, benefit of the society, the Ch Chesterton Society, but also to pray for vocations and, and conversions. Those seem to be the two prayer focuses, but in order to develop that, um, I believe it was in 2019, in the spring of 2019, a group from the Chesterton uh, Schools Network, I believe it was the St. Paul, it was the Minneapolis St. Paul, the Chesterton School mm -hmm. there, Okay. went to Rome. And they offered to, to take with them in prayer intentions from around the world, anybody who wanted to, to um, communicate by email, give them your intentions and they would take those and pray while they were on their pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of people responded from all over the world. It was really amazing. Wow. And as we compiled all these prayer requests, um, we realized that there were themes that began to bubble up in the prayer requests and common concerns and common needs mm -hmm. and themes. And some of them were very, um, very Chestertonian. Many of them were just very universal to, to all of us. Um, and we took, basically took all those hundreds and hundreds of prayer requests, mm -hmm. prayer intention requests, and we consolidated them into these 10 intentions. Um, and as we did it, we did it also with in mind to pray for these intentions the way that Gilbert and Francis would have prayed. Oh, wow. So, so when we're praying along the lines of these intent for these intentions, we're really praying with Gilbert and Francis. And as you look through the intentions and pray through them, you can see, for instance, um, when we pray for the sick, um, one of the lines in the prayer for the sick is especially for those suffering from health problems, including chronic physical and mental illness. Physical yeah. problems and mental yeah. illness. This was a of this was this is reflective of the Chestertons' life and their story because mm -hmm. Francis suffered from chronic illness, Gilbert did too, um, and they had family members who struggled with mental illness. Mm -hmm. So they had particular compassion for those concerns. So that's just one example of you. If you look through the intentions, you'll see Chestertonian um, concerns and sensitivities reflected yeah. in these intentions. And I, yeah, I get that sense when I pray it. Um, yeah, for sure. I totally agree. Uh, so let's say worst case scenario, there's no rosary leak around you and no one wants to pray with you. You know, you don't. You don't have the time to start one, you know, where's just worst case scenario. You can I still, know where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can still pray with us on, on Thursdays on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, uh, yes. every Thursday at 4 PM central, we have someone it's, it's usually either me or Nancy Brown 
or Noel Culbertson. I've interviewed both of them on the podcast before. We usually, uh, we, we cycle through and we pray, we lead the rosary. We lead the scriptural rosary. Um, so that's definitely part of the rosary league. And, yep. and yeah, you can participate in that. Um, and yes, that, I mean, that, that's a, a, a great way if, if you can't start when you're, but, but we prioritize starting when you're yourselves or, or pray, praying with people in person. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I, I wanted to mention. Um, yeah. And I think too, that the, um, the video, um, rosary, the virtual rosary mm -hmm. is a really great way for somebody who's thinking about starting one and maybe isn't sure oh, about right the scriptural rosary or how the intentions integrate with the scriptural rosary. If you tune in and pray along with the virtual rosary a few times, you'll kind of understand how yeah. that format works. And it's a really kind of a good training spot for someone who's considering leaving one in their home or in their neighborhood. Or if you want to take one yourself um, on your own Zoom platform. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I agree with that. that that's a, it's a great way to just learn the ropes and, and get how it works. Uh, apologies. If you hear rain outside, I don't think the devil wants us to, to be having this conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, actually I have one more question that is kind of a, um, might throw you for a loop, but we'll see. I don't, I want to throw you under the bus, but okay. let's say, cause every once in a while we get, we get comments from non-Catholics or, you know, not non-Christians, you know, what's, sure. what's, uh, the point of, of praying They'd actually, I mean, they'd go so far as say, this is, this is a waste of time. You know, the, what, what are you doing? You know, it's, it's just, it's just pointless. What, uh, what would you say to those, uh, types of comments? Are these, are these people who are questioning the rosary or quest questioning prayer in general? The questioning prayer in general, I would say. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> hmm. Because here, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you prayer, some time. You know what? Yeah. Prayer is just conversation with God. Mm -hmm. And, and, and as Christians, we realize that we are not alone before God. We're in a community, not only of people who are here on earth with us, but in the, in the spiritual community as well, the, the community of those who've gone before us. And, and we all go before the throne of God together. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's, there's, we're made to pray. I, I believe that answers a really deep thing inside of our, our souls. And as humans, this is what we're made to do. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Someday, <laughs> hopefully by, by the grace of God, if we are in heaven face to face with him, we won't have to pray. We'll just be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right yeah. now we're separated by that veil and we pray to right. get past it. Yeah, I know. I agree. And, and on a, on a practical level, a lot of the people that would criticize prayer, they, they kind of get, um, they, they at least get the idea of talking with your ancestors or talking with people who have died. Right. And, and that's, that's a, I think a good gateway into it and, and, uh, under, you know, initial understanding of what, what we're doing. Um, obviously ultimately we're doing a lot more than just just that, you know, but, but that, that's, that's at least an understanding that a secular person might, might have, right. And being in tune with, with the, the non-physical. I mean, that's, that's, I, I always want to try to, you know, give a practical component to it and, and try to give a practical understanding, but, but yeah, I, I think it is, I think what you said, it is a natural thing it's a natural thing to try to connect with the supernatural. There's paradoxical. <laughs> it is. And yeah. Prayer is spiritual. There's no question about it. Yeah. Prayer is spiritual. And I also want to add here that I don't believe prayer is meant just to be uh, a laundry list or us telling God what to do. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Prayer is at its deepest level communion and it's, it's just being together. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we can, we can bring our needs. The, the most appropriate thing for us as humans is to be humble and come before the Lord with acknowledging our need. Yes, and exactly. Yeah. Our need for him. Uh, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned what, what prayer isn't. Um, and I'm sure people obviously, uh, I mean, everyone suffers with, am I praying well? Right. I, I, I'm pretty sure Pope, Pope John Paul II would say, probably not. You're not praying well. Uh, but, but the first, I mean, the first easy step is to pray 
to uh, pray that you pray better, right? Because if pray mean, means ask, I, I pray that you do this. It's, it's an asking. Uh, pray that you, you can pray better. That's a yeah. That's that'll calm, I think, the the stress around praying badly. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And I, I think it was John Paul II who said something about, and I'm sure I'm matching this quote, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am the best at that at messing up yeah, the quotes on he this said podcast. Something about the fact that there's no uh there's no bad he was questioned about, you know, is is there a way to pray the rosary badly or poorly? And he mm-hmm. said no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> pray it. Yeah. Um, I think they said something was once asked, well, what about, I always fall asleep when I pray the rosary. And the answer to that is that's okay. You're sleeping in the blessed mother's arms. Oh, wow. Um, so interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I, you know, it, there isn't, um, it's a I very m- mysterious any, thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah heaven's not judging us for how we pray. Little children can pray beautifully because they simply pray simply. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they yeah. Pray from their hearts. Yeah. And that's all we need to do. Um, you know, David was a great example of somebody who had complete honesty before God. Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's kind of the really the, the compliment of what of what I think Pope John Paul II said, because yeah. I think his his point is that you you are praying badly, but that does that's not a bad thing. You know, that that might be the you know, you're, it's, it's all definitely better than not praying. Yeah. And, 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 uh, I think, I think the way you said it is, is a good way of thinking about it is, is, you know, it, you're it, praying is praying, uh, well, it's kind of, it is paradoxical. It's hard to, it, to put into words because prayer is probably one, you know, one of the most mysterious things to us. So, yeah. I think that there's that beautiful prayer in the scriptures where the, um, where the person says, I can't remember who it was, but he said, Lord, help my unbelief. Mm. And um, I think when we pray that, that's, that's a beautiful point of beginning. Yeah. And, and um, my dad would know who, who said that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. great. Yeah. I'm glad. I, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm glad we, uh, we, we talked about that at the end. Uh, and hopefully, Hopefully this will give you the courage to, to start your own rosary league group. And, uh, and by the way, if you choose to start it, do still visit the page, uh, of the Francis Chester rosary league, uh, because you can register your group and we can put you on the map and say, and, and you join the community and we, and people can see that you've, you've started a rosary elite group. So I encourage you to do that. Um, I also encourage you to, to become part of the apostolate, um, cause that does help us out. It helps us with these initiatives. So if you if you go to chesterton.org slash membership, uh, you can become a member of the apostolate there. And you know what? If there's a local society near you, join that as well because uh, you know, like you know, Vicky is a coordinator of that too. So sh- we do really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, Vicky, did you want to say anything else? Hmm. I think um, I think it's also important that you register your group if you're going to start one, uh, not just to have your spot on the map. But also so that we can be in communication. Yes, there may yes. come times when there are specific needs that we have at the at the society, or that you have that you would like the power of prayer of the whole network behind. Mm-hmm. And you can, if we have that communication network set up, we can share those concerns and we can be standing with each other in our prayers. So yes, thanks, thanks for mentioning really, that. Really, really good thing to do. Right. Yeah. I. Yep. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Vicki, for coming on and explaining all that and explaining the Francis Chester Rosary League. And uh, thank you all for, for listening. Until next time, help us to make uncommon sense common again. <laughs>